Right, February. I don't think there's any cliches that's going to be able to cover this. Everybody saying it is a massive month, and and I guess it doesn't become a cliche. It is, isn't it? There's no getting away from it. Yeah, I think once the games started being postponed around the Christmas time, we knew because of the the statute you're given by the the National League, you have to rearrange the games within 42 days if possible. Of course, the Tuesdays in February were always going to be the ones that were filled. Um, as you said, having looked at the fixture list when I walked through the door, we've had to move Walking and Altrincham. That would have already have happened. Um, that would have put a bit of a mediation between the top and the bottom of the league that we would have played. But as it stands, I think we've played four of the top six and South End and Dover. So we've seen a little bit of a well, we've seen a little bit of a skew with of the of the division because we've been at all the big clubs, let's say, uh, with all due respect to Dover. But but um, yeah, we're going to get a real taste for the whole division over this month, and with five games at home out of the seven or six out of the next eight. It's a defining period, you know, uh, to have six games in 21 days in February is a massive ask. Hence, you know, the look, the, the look for other people to help us is, is always on. Um, but ultimately, I've seen enough in the last couple of weeks, um, certainly away at Chesterfield, home to Notts County, um, away to Southend United and the first half at Boreham Wood. To be really, really confident in that, I know what I'm going to get out of the vast majority of the players now. Um, and it'll be a horses for courses um, February. Some will play and then not be involved in the next game. They'll not like it. But then I need the fittest, most hungry, most you know, committed people I can have every time we walk on across that white line, Saturday and Tuesday for the next four or five weeks. So trust me, the preparation behind the scenes has been really good. Um, I'm, I'm delighted with the way the lads or trying to take on board the, the nuances that we're, we're making, subtle differences as we go. Um, and we look forward to welcoming Weymouth tomorrow. So you're actually heading to February, it seems to me quite confident, I wouldn't say probably confident is not the right word, but in a good frame of mind about the, the, the February challenge. Because it is a challenge if you don't pass. Yeah, I mean, I've said to the chairman, I think by the end of February, or certainly after the Solly Hull game on the 5th of March, I think it is, I can then tell him what, what to plan for. At this moment in time, we've got no other focus than every game, and every game is a stepping stone for us to remain in this division. That's what we want, that's what the club's planning for, it's what we've planned for since I've come in the building. There's no eye on anything other than that. So I can assure anybody who thinks by us letting one or two go, i.e. Ethan and Michael on loan, or young Ty on loan, that, that's just because it suits them and it suits this football club at this time. Um, that's nothing to do with long-term planning on division status or anything like that at all. We are completely focused on being in this division and that focus comes really into perspective at three o'clock tomorrow. I'm pleased you didn't see your head because that was a question I was going to ask. But are you, is it still National League or are you in the back of your mind thinking next season probably in a different division? But No, I think I answered that question. Yeah. I, nobody at this football club, certainly in the dressing room, upstairs, tea lady or the lady who does our lunches, they aren't planning for that either. This football club wants to be in this division. We've got enough games to do it. We need, we, listen, for, to use an analogy, I looked at the fixtures in January and I thought it was going to be dry. I thought it was going to be a dry January. It was a tough ask what we had. But we got through it. We nearly got some points on the board. I think we should have got some points on the board, or we could have, but for a couple of indiscretions, not by ourselves, but, it, but, but that happened. Um, so we've got, to go in Jan we've got to go into February and try and fill our boots, basically, and see, get wet. That's what we've got to get done. Uh, uh, Weymouth, and, and again, as you just said as well, all due respect to the teams mm -hmm. you were playing, but... If you can get the three points in the bag against Weymouth, that's a great way to tee up that challenge ahead, isn't it? Undoubtedly. I mean, they're the team nearest to us, all the way above us. Um, if, if they were to take three points, I think they would look at it as six, but we won't. We look at it as three. There's only ever three on, on offer every time we go on the pitch. Um, but it, it's, we, have to, we have to have the first step in the right direction which we did against Dover, and then we've had that horrendous spell of no games and then tough, tough away fixtures. It'll be the first time we've been in a ground with a hopefully partisan crowd in, in our favour, you know, since the Dover and the Nantwich game. So from that point of view, I'm looking forward to that, hearing, hearing our fans more than the, the opposition fans. So listen, everything is pointing 
to February being the month that defines the club, and, and I'm not going to deny that. So it's it's important we get off on a on a better note than we have in the previous couple of league fixtures. Simple as that. It'd be fair to say if you do turn it around, you, you, you'll have the name Tommy Miracle Man Witherington because it is a real big ask, isn't it? Well, it is. It, <laughs> It is if you look if you keep looking at the table and gaps, but people look at gaps between us and the teams at the top of the division, or the teams in tenth, or the teams in. I don't. I've said that before I come in. There's a couple of teams that I earmarked myself that I'll not name, that I do feel that will be in and around it because it's just the way the, the league works. Teams often get off to a great start, but for all sorts of reasons, lack of cup run finances, budget cuts, whatever. Teams have bad spells. We've got to coincide a bad spell from another team with a very good spell from ourselves. The club at this stage, at this point in the season, when we're right about halfway through it, haven't had a great spell at any stage. And I genuinely believe we're going to. The squad is looking stronger, we're looking healthier. Um, and that, that bodes well for, for me in terms of the fixture schedule, because like I said, I think it'll be difficult for anybody to play 90 minutes in every game we've got left. So the options are going to become be better for me. Um, like I said, I do believe that the lads are on board to a man. So from that point of view, we're all rowing in the same direction. We've just got to get a little bit further up the river. Um, obviously, you've lost Eden, but I guess that's how football operates. If you get a good deal for a, a player and you've, you've allowed him to go into the football league, mm -hmm. which is, is great, you've got, obviously, Theo's now signed up. You've got a, a replacement, probably not exactly mm -hmm. like, but uh, in, the Ethan Coleman was a no-brainer, wasn't it? Well, it's one of them things. It's, there's, there's football playing and there's football business, and, you know, Lots of people get it wrong in football business because they think, because it's human people that they're humans that they're working with, it's a very different thing. It's not like, you know, you give me a car keys, your car work for me the same as it works for you. But these are human people. They're, there's emotion, there's geography, there's family, there's everything. And, and Ethan's come to Kingsland, Ethan, Ethan Coleman, sorry, he's come to Kingsland Town and he's done that to give him himself a platform to go back to the EFL. Now that was known when he joined the club by the people inside the club, the manager, the chairman, everybody else. So with the horrendous state of the world has been in and cash flow for all clubs has, has been difficult, there's been hardly any games here, has there? So the lights have got to be kept on, it's as simple as that. And there's got to be business done. And, and Ethan was the one that somebody came after the, the deal was seen fit to be the right deal for the club, the right deal for the lad. All three parties were happy. I think we move on. And the players in the dressing room who have aspirations to go on can, can absolutely be true in their mind that just because we're not at the right end of this table doesn't mean people aren't looking at them with a view to going up, up the ladder. We've got a lot of lads in there with good pedigree. They've come from really good academies. Um, the only thing they haven't got is a lot of first-team football behind them. Now, that's, that's something we're trying to address by adding one or two that maybe have got that or certainly got more recent first-team uh, action around their, their numbers. So, look, at the end of the day, people would look at the Ethan... If, if I'd had a choice, would I would have kept Ethan? Of course we would. But he's now played both games for Leighton Orient since he's gone there. So this isn't a development thing from Leighton Orient's point of view. They've seen a guy playing in the bottom end of the National League who can play in the middle to the top end of the League 2 because that's where they want to be. A bit of a feather in the, cl the club's cap, I suspect. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I mean, listen, Ethan was a good player when he got here. But he's been, he's been used and implemented by first Ian and then myself in a way that showcased what he's good at. Mm -hmm. um, like, like I said, I've been in football long enough to know that there's always somebody passing information on about players in terms of how well they're doing. Oh, you remember him, he was at Reading, he was going to be this, he's gone to Brackley, he's come to Kings Lynn, he's now excelling. Happens all the time. And if we can, you know, we can unearth a couple of three of them every couple of three years, and I'm sure the lights will stay on. <laughs> um, just in your, your last three games, I think it's three, you've taken the lead and lost them. And that, for you, must be frustrating, but, yeah. I mean, taking the lead at Boreham Wood, I must admit, I wasn't there, but I thought, wow, this is fantastic. But then, uh, there's a little bit of deja vu about it. Yeah, I mean, the opposition to have to take credit in that, that instance, definitely. Um, I thought Boreham Wood were excellent in the second half. Um, they, they have a way of playing that stifles you, and 
they gather momentum without without doing a great deal of in the term of football, but they got a, a good a good way of playing and a good set of lads to to get the game plan done. So I had no complaints about that defeat. I'll be honest. Sometimes you go onto a pitch and you come off after ninety minutes and think, were we worthy of a point or two, or, or three? And I've got to say, on that day, I thought Boreham Wood were worthy of their three points. At Southend, well, I think Southend are a good side and Kev's put a get together in a very short time a good group of players playing again in a very effective way. I definitely think we deserve something off there. That was taken out of our hands, in my opinion, um, which has been well documented. But that's more hard to swallow because I know over the 90 minutes we definitely deserved a minimum of a point. Now, people will allude to the fact that our goalkeeper had to make a save or two in that game, but so did theirs. You know, we were definitely in the game had enough chances to have won the game, certainly did enough as a team on and off the ball to have taken a point and to have had it ripped from where we grasp in the last minute. That one point might be a big point in the end of the day, we don't know. But what I do know is we didn't get what we deserved out of that game. Um, the Notts County thing, I think Notts County were the best team I've seen, certainly in that 15, 20 minute period after half time. But for the first half, again, these lads have shown me they can, they can be coached and stick to a game plan that's slightly different to the norm. Um, as we did there. We, again, the first half at Boreham Wood, the first half at Notts County, in particular them two games, we should have, could have, had two or three goals, not one. So we're definitely starting games much more positively than before. Um, what we've got to do is, like you said, we've got to see that, that period after the game settles down and the other team have a spell, which is always going to happen. Um, we've got to get weather, weather that storm. I mean, I would love to go and win three games in a row, one nil. Ugly, horrible, not great football, but we win. Because I feel for the goalkeeper and the back lads here, yeah, everybody, everybody moans about us not scoring enough goals. When you score a goal, you can win a game. If we can keep a clean sheet, that starts at the front, not at the back. That he's the last line of defence. So I don't blame the goalkeeper for that. If you look at the goals we've conceded recently, I don't think John has been, in, you know, at fault directly for, for any of them. So, as a team, we have to be better when we're in the lead. And again, that's something we've got to work on. You mentioned goals. Yeah. Every week we ask the question. Um, I mean, there comes a the point, I guess, where if you don't get a striker, the, the longer it goes on, the harder this job is. Yes, if we weren't scoring goals, but we are. We, we've scored. We scored a goal in all of the last three games that you've mentioned, mm. and we've lost by the odd one in two of them. Mm. So from that point of view, do I want a 30 goal a season strike? <laughs> of course I do, everybody does. You can find me one and I'll sign him. You've got to, be, you've got to have the right, he's got to want to come here first and foremost. We are, we've identified a hell of a lot of strikers and I've put lots of names to lots of people who could facilitate that to happen. Usually what happens is there's a domino effect. If one moves, then another one moves, another one moves. Another. And this, if you look through the bottom end of the Football League, and into the National League. Only yesterday I've read about a couple of players moving to a level below us. Mm -hmm. That tells me they're not for this level. So from that point of view, I don't think I've missed anybody that I've had designs on bringing to the club. I still have irons and fires that I genuinely believe are still on orange and not turned to black yet. So they're, they're live, let's say. But sometimes circumstance means you have to wait a little bit longer than you want. Um, but I will tell you this, whichever team we picked so far, in my opinion, has looked like scoring a goal. Now, again, like I don't level it at the goalkeeper because we can see, I'm not going to level it at a striker or one or two strikers who are here. Some who are taking their first forages at this level, it's unfair to, to blame them guys that, you know, they're, they're finding their way. Now, fans are, have every right to want that number nine to be that Alan Shearer type, you know, who's going to score you 30 goals, but then you have to pay for that. that you know, <laughs> and, that, and that ultimately, don't get me wrong, the chairman has not yet turned me down on anything I've asked him to do to improve our situation either behind the scenes on a training basis or to add to the squad in a personnel basis. So I've got to say thanks to him for that. And him more than anybody would be pushing to, to help improve the squad if we can. Um, but like I said, there are certain things that he's actually told me and highlighted to me about certain stats before I came and stats since I come in. Like I said, the future is bright. Mm. So would you, because you're a full-time club, mm -hmm. would you consider making an exception if you could get a striker but only on part-time? Because obviously we talked before, haven't we, about relocating. Yeah, you yeah. want a bit of experience. Somebody with a wife and two children in school may not want to relocate to Lynn. Mm -hmm. Would you... Put that aside and say, okay, you can do part time. It, 
if needs must. At the end of the day, I think as a manager, you have to manage manage the situation, manage the budget, manage players as individuals, players as a group, the squad in general. I, listen, I can tell you now, I'm going to have more than 10 people disappointed tomorrow that they're not in the starting 11, more than 10. And then I'm going to have five or six disappointed because they're not going to be on the bench. Now you're going to go, where are them come from? Well. I can tell you now, I've got 21 or 22 to pick from tomorrow. Um, and that is the first time that I've felt we've got as strong a squad as we possibly can to pick from. So from that point of view, we're in a good place, like I said, physically, mentally and healthy. Uh, and I, I have to say, I didn't want to say this, but I have to say our season starts now, to be honest with you. You know, at the end of the day, we've got just under half a season left. We've got hell of a schedule, but... We're up for it, you know, the staff, the players, everybody behind the scenes. We want the town to get behind us because this month is massive. Get behind us in these five out of seven in, in February. Listen, the away fans have been absolutely phenomenal. I bumped into a few after the South End game. Um, I bought them a drink, by the way, so they might, it might be because of that. But, <laughs> but, but they were very, very complimentary to myself and to the group. I was with family at the time. Um, they were very respectful of my space. Uh, on the night, but I could tell they are absolutely 120% Kings Lynn. If that's the case, get them to bring their mates and, and be as vociferous as there was in the pub that I've seen them in out here. And I'm sure, like I said, we'll have that partisan crowd that we definitely will need. Talk about that extra man, that's always helpful. Massive, again, massive. <laughs> Listen, I genuinely believe we wouldn't have conceded a penalty at South End had the crowd not been in, yeah. the, in the building. That's not, that's not a criticism of the referee. It's fact. It, it creates emotion. It creates... And I've played in front of 70,000 people and I've played in front of 700 people. And I can tell you what I prefer because you, when they say you don't hear it, you hear a din. Mm -hmm. And if there's more than normal, you definitely hear it. And, and like I said, our players have thrived against Notts County, against Chesterfield, against Halifax even when there's only 2,000 in there. But when it's in on top of you and, and you can hear your name and what have you, it does spur you on. Um, Injury-wise, mm -hmm. I mean, if you, you say you've got as strong a squad as you've had, um, mm -hmm. there's always a couple of questions. We always ask about poor old Kyle. Uh, and, and I don't think Gold played last week, did he? Didn't Gold. He did say there was a couple of yeah. impacts. Yeah, he took an impact not to, to his shoulder. Um, so he's, he's on the mend. Um, and we could well have him back for, for Saturday. I'm just going to go in there and check the, the last sort of details of that. Um, Kyle was the one tested positive last yeah, week. Saying. Uh, but he's he's done his he's done his protocol. He's had his negative test, so he's back into train. So again, he seems to be the one that gets close to the door a lot of the time, and then the door keeps shutting in his face. It's not me doing that. It's him. It's his body or his COVID test. I can't really help that. But he's back around it, so that's that's positive. Him as a him as a person being around this group is important, in my opinion. And I haven't had him on the pitch for me yet. So from that point of view, I haven't had him on the pitch in terms of the match. He's only been on a training pitch, and I can see what he is on the training ground. See the character he is. I can see the command, the respect that he commands from the group. So I undoubtedly need him around the group. Um, when him and his whole family unfortunately had COVID for a week, I can't have him around the group. So that's really, really a positive thing in my. Whether he plays or he doesn't play, him being around the place is good. Um, we should have one or two others that you may not know about yet coming in, but that that's something that we're always working on, and I work on that every week. So. Always keep you guessing on that. As in new players? Possibly. Possibly today. Possibly. So it's not worth me writing anything until about five o'clock when Bridgewood's on the website. <laughs> unlikely, <laughs> unlikely, unlikely before the game, to be honest. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so, it's something, but, like so I said, there's, 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 there's plates spinning, there's irons yeah. in the fires, however you want to say that. Yeah. There's always possibilities of, of new faces. Okay. Um, just the thing on Kyle, he's like back in the stand as well. We all stand up when he walks in. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you can see, see where his heart on his sleeve. I, I think, you know, he's one of them kind of guys. So. He demands things of people around him, and I think that's a, that's a characteristic that the team, and it's not the team, it's not an this isn't a knock of the individual players. I think the society we live in now, young players particularly, are encouraged not to be that vocal towards each other from a very young age in the academies now. It's it's not your job to tell him what to do. Well, it is when you become a man and you're out there because I can't get my voice around the pitch as much as I want to, because I'd have to speak to every player. But if if I've got little versions of me on the pitch giving the right information out the good information will spread much more quickly and much more evenly across the squad and like I think Kyle will bring that to the to the group as one or two others do but they don't have the same sort of voice as I do 
all cadres. With Cole, do I say he's um, uh, available tomorrow? To could, could, yeah, yeah, he could well be available tomorrow. Because no. it's, it's quite easy to say that. And well, he may test correct. positive in the morning, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, although he shouldn't have to test now. I, I don't know where we are with that now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Good right. luck tomorrow. Looking forward to it.